So we're going to make a rope brush. So to do that, we go to our tools menu up here and choose cylinder 3D. Drag it out onto the canvas, press T to go into edit mode and shift F to see our polyframes. From here, we can go down to our initialize parameters. I'll turn the floor off for the moment. Uh, and we change our horizontal divide to eight to make this an eight sided cylinder. And we'll change our vertical divide to nine uh, to make this to give us five loops in the center of this cylinder. So this is now something that we can use, but it's not editable yet. We need to make Polymesh 3D before that we can actually edit this. So you can see this is our current tool. As soon as I hit make Polymesh 3D, we get a new tool here. This is editable, so we can control drag over the top two bands of loops and hit control W. If the color variation isn't enough, just do it again and hit control W until you get something clear. I'll control drag over the bottom and hit control W to get a different color again. I now want to push the top and the bottom up from here, so I'm going to go to a top view, which we can do by clicking on the green arrow here. Uh, this will toggle between top and bottom if you've already selected it once. For our purposes, that doesn't matter. I'll hit control, and with control held down, I'll press the space bar, which will allow us to move this masked area. So I'm going to hover over this uh, center point here. I'll let go of the space bar once I'm here, but I'm still holding down control, and I'll hold down alt to say I want to select everything except what's underneath my current selection. So basically that's masked everything on the outside and not this, which means we can go back to our front view. And from our front view, we can hit W and then scale that up. And we now have that, those two points pushed up. Control drag will get rid of our mask. Q will get us back into uh, draw mode. We don't have enough resolution to do what we want to do yet. So I'm going to go to geometry and I'm going to hit divide once, twice, three times. And you'll notice that if I control drag out a mask here, we split this down the middle, but I want to divide this into four different sections. So I'm going to control drag to get rid of that. Um, in ZBrush, Y is the up axis. So that's the most important one for us today. So we go to our transform, we will activate symmetry. We'll turn on Y and not X. We want this to be symmetrical on that axis. We want it radially symmetry, radial symmetry with four different sides to it. So when I do this now, when I hold down control and I drag, I can again hold down space to move this if you want to, uh, but just hold down control and get a thin strip somewhere down the middle, something like this. Once you've done that, you'll see that this has now created four different segments for us, but we've masked the center and not the outside and we want the inverse. So I'm gonna hit control and tap on the canvas to invert that. And this is now a really rough, a really sharp mask. So to make this a little bit softer, I'm gonna control tap on the mask and that will soften that up for us. Once we've done that, we will now want to pinch in those sides. So we go down to our deformation palette, our deformation roll up here, and we'll use the size for this. We don't want to change the Y axis. We don't want this to sink in from the top and bottom. We just want to pull in the sides. So I'm gonna do this and then pull this to the side and you see that pulls those sides in nicely for us. I'll do it one more time. Now I'll control drag or control click on the canvas to invert that selection. So we now protected the inside and we want to inflate the outside. But again, we don't want to inflate up and down. We just want to inflate at the X and Z. So I'll do that and I'll push this and inflate these two like that. Control drag to get rid of that. And this is the start of our brush. So the way that tripart brushes work is that this is the start of your stroke. This is the part that will tile all the way along your stroke. And this is the end of your stroke. So to demonstrate that we can create a brush now. We go to brush, create, create insert mesh and we want a new brush. That's now given us a new brush. So we can go to our stroke menu and turn on curve mode. Once we do that, we need something to draw it onto. So I'm going to select a plain 3D and it has to be a sculptable mesh that you draw on. So I'll make this a poly mesh 3D. I'll turn shift F off so we can see what we're doing and I'll draw out a stroke. So you can see this is the brush stroke as it comes out. Uh, if I press shift F, you can see we have a start color, a tiling, repeating center color, and the pink one at the end. So while the colors may not tally with this, this is the green tiling piece in the center. This is the start, this is the end. So when we got here, these aren't stitched together. So we need to go to our brush menu and under modifiers, say weld points. And that will now look at all these points and try and weld them together. So we get a much nicer looking curve. I'll press shift F so we can see what this looks like without those. And it's nice, but it's a little bit faceted along here. So we can improve that by going down to our curve here and changing that to say three. And we click on our curve again, and you can see that this is a lot smoother now than it was before. So 
This is fine, but it's not a rope. These things need to twist around each other. But in order for them to twist, we need to make sure that this part in the center twists around itself. So right now our mesh is quite dense. I'm gonna bring it down to two segments. And then I'm gonna delete the higher and the lower. So these are this is our um, base brush that we're gonna use now. It needs to be inflated a little bit. So I'm gonna go back down to our deformation and I'm gonna inflate this, not on the Y, you'll notice, just flating it out like this so we get a thicker brush. Because we don't have subdivisions on this, we can now use dynamic subdivision. So we can turn on dynamic to see what that would look like. And this is kind of the level of inflation that I'd expect to see on a rope. So I'll go back to deformation, see whether we want to push it out anymore. I think we're fine where we are, something like that. Um, so once we have that, we now need to twist this. So to help us with the twisting, we can turn on the floor. So that's shift P. The Z axis is the one behind us. And I'm just using this to have some grid guidelines. And if this isn't enough, we can even append a cube and select that cube. And I'm just gonna scale this in a little bit. I just need some points for reference. And I'm gonna push this out in front of us here. And I'm gonna go back to our cylinder and I'll turn on transparency. So we're now basically using this cube as just basically a way to have some guidelines. So what we need to, to have happen is that when we go down to our deformation and we decide to twist this, and we need to twist on our Y axis, not our Z. When I'm twisting this, I need this top point to correspond to a point underneath in order for that to actually weld. So I'm gonna keep on twisting until we get these to a point. So I, I need this point and this point to match up. Uh, I'm, I'm using my cube here as a kind of a little helper guide. And I can see as far as I can see here, I think these, these shadows here are a good indicator. These seem to be aligning up. So this should be the right amount of twist that we have for this. So we can take our cube and delete that now. And this is our object. I can press D to see what it would look like with our subdivision. This as a rope will do. Um, and if I had inflated it anymore before we did the twist, um, this would have got thicker. When we do our inflation now, we're basically just doing our inflation for the whole thing. So if we turn on the Y now, we, we'll actually get a, a better result um, if we want this to look like this, for example. So I'll press Shift D to turn this off and we're ready to make our brush again. As long as we're in a front view and we need to be in this front view, we go to brush, create, create insert mesh, new stroke menu, turn on curve mode again. And now I'll go back to our plane and we'll draw out another stroke using our new brush. So you can see this is very difficult to see. I'll press D for dynamic to see what this is, but we still haven't stitched these. So we need to go to our brush modifiers and turn on weld points. That will weld those together. This is looking much nicer. And just to be sure that don't forget after doing this, you can always change your inflate settings and actually inflate X, Y, Z, and just kind of change this brush to fit whatever look that you're going for. So whether you want a thicker brush like this, um, or if you even inflate it negatively, you can make it thinner and get some interesting looks as well. So basically find the thickness that you like and use that as your final setting. Hope this tip helps and as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, please do let me know. Cheers. Bye.